The Crown Tundra seemingly holds many secrets, the biggest being the true king of the Galar region, who is revealed to be... <laughs> ah, look at the top of his head! The two trailers we've received for the Crown Tundra were packed with legendary Pokemon, honestly more than there should have been. But the one new Pokemon that wasn't related to any previous legendaries was the supposed king, Calyrex. With the overwhelming amount of information that we got, memes were the first reaction to this thing's appearance. But as the clock ticks faster toward the release, we've still got almost no details on what Calyrex is. The first stop would be the Pokemon Sword and Shield website, which has given us quite a bit of information on the other legendary Pokemon. Although Calyrex's page is looking a bit barren, all it states is, this Pokemon ruled all of the Galar region in ancient times. Though it appears delicate and slight, its every move is filled with grace and dignity. It also has extremely high intelligence and is said to see every past, present, and future event. And I mean, this is cool and all, but they really aren't showing their full hand. So, first off is the statement that this Pokemon ruled all of the Galar region in ancient times. The main story of Pokemon Sword and Shield was focused around discovering the truth behind the region's history and how it was changed, and then how it was further questioned right after that. The final conclusion that was reached was that Zacian and Zamazenta were the two kings who fought off the rampaging Gigantamax Pokemon during the Darkest Day 3,000 years ago. This is a long time ago and could be considered ancient times. The only other indication of time when it comes to Pokemon Sword and Shield is that Eternatus crash-landed in the Galar region 20,000 years ago. But the Galar region might not have been an established country at the time in need of a king. But there might be some connection between the two. We'll talk about that in a bit. Regardless, at the very least, we're told that Calyrex was the king of the Galar region and could possibly have a connection with Zacian and Zamazenta. A while ago, I had mentioned in another video that the legendary wolves seem to be a contingency plan in case any threats arise, like in the case of the Darkest Day and Eternatus. But now that we have Calyrex in the mix as the supposed king of Galar, its high intelligence and ability to see the future all make sense now. If Calyrex was the leader of the Galar region and could foresee a future where Eternamax Eternatus would go out of control, then it obviously would have made sure powerful Pokemon like Zacian and Zamazenta were around to stop it. If we want to take things even further, the whole meeting between Hop, the player character, and Zacian and Zamazenta seems all too convenient. Why is the Slumbering Weld right next to the town that we grew up in? And why are the Legendary Wolves even there? Could it all have been planned from the very beginning? And while this psychic typing for a clairvoyant king is pretty cool, what about the grass typing? Design-wise, it does look mostly animalistic, having the face of a deer? Rabbit? Something between the two. Unless the crown on its head is also meant to resemble a bulb. Either that or he's been sipping that big grain juice. And whether or not the large bulb on its head means the potential to bloom into like some giant flower or something, the grass taping has got to have some deeper meaning. In the Crown Tundra, there are quite a few giant trees for it being a tundra. The most notable being the giant one with giant fruit. In the past, I've tossed around the idea that this could be a tree created through max energy, which is why it's so big. But if we're already talking about a magical tree, am I crazy to think that Calyrex could have come from this tree originally? Maybe not this one, more likely the other big tree that's all withered up and has a temple built around it as if it were the birthplace of a legendary Pokemon, but that couldn't possibly be it. Although allow me to run with this. If Eternatus crash landed in Galar 20,000 years ago, likely before any countries were established, and its max energy seeping throughout the region caused this max tree to start growing, what if it also influenced some other plant-based creation, like Calyrex? We've already seen and discussed how high concentrations of Eternatus' max energy can cause distortion in space-time, so what if that's what gives Calyrex the ability to see into the past and future? I don't know, I think it's a wild stretch, but I do think Calyrex being a grass type could have some sort of connection to the two giant trees we see in the Crown Tundra. But now I suppose the question would be, why is Calyrex in the Crown Tundra? And why has no one talked about it? Is it hiding away? Or perhaps it's purposely been allowed to fade into obscurity? Maybe for its own protection, in a similar way that the other legends of the Gala region have been covered up? Several other legendary Pokemon have been sealed away in this location, so perhaps that might be the case. 
again for its own safety and the safety of the people of the Galar region. It continues to lie in wait after having prepared for the future with Zacian and Zamazenta, who were able to bring down Eternamax Eternatus when it showed up to potentially destroy the region, until the final part of its plan brings us to the Crown Tundra. Hey, this is Unscripted Gatorx, and one more small portion I want to discuss really quickly. This does have to do with some spoilers, so if you don't want to know anything from the data mines, go ahead and click to this timestamp to get to the regular outro. But regardless, there was one crazy bit of information that we found out about Calyrex from the data mine, and that is that there are two more unrevealed legendary Pokemon currently under the code names. Hakuba and Kokuba, and supposedly these Pokemon are able to fuse with Calyrex. There was also some evidence found of uh, items similar to the DNA splicers that would allow Pokemon to fuse and unfuse respectively. So from that, there's just an entire world of possibilities, and I, I really can't even think of what we could discuss for that and how you could theorize further from there, but I do think that this then would lead more so into the explanation for Calyrex being a grass type. I mean, you know, psychic type does make sense for being able to fuse as well, but it, I, I think it's leaning more toward the grass typing and again, the connection to the trees. The trees themselves could also maybe even be representations of these two different Pokemon. Again, it's Calyrex that's able to fuse with different Pokemon. So it's a little more similar, I suppose, to Necrozma with how Necrozma is able to absorb Solgaleo and Lunala and, you know, become the uh, the Dawn Wings and the, the Dusk Mane form. But I really am curious to see how things will move forward. Very likely, this isn't going to be revealed in any of the trailers. You know, maybe the Pokemon will, whatever these Pokemon end up being. Again, the names Hakuba and Kokuba are just code names that are used in a lot of the data storage. Again, you know, a lot of this data was in the Isle of Armor update, but it's just incomplete information but it does give us a hint toward what's going to be happening in the crown tundra and if this is the case it's just one piece of the puzzle that gets just really really crazy but anyway hey this is gatorx and let me know what you think what are your thoughts on calyrex what could it possibly be hiding what's its story what's its lore and all, all of that leave that in the comments below also while you're down there just want to remind you be uh, respectful and mindful of other people who might not want to see spoilers uh, if you did watch the spoiler portion of the video which was more of a discussion rather than a theory but uh concerning the theory at least what do you think if you'd like me to discuss maybe the uh the the other spicy details that uh that we don't know for sure or that not everybody knows um uh, maybe that could be something we could discuss in a different fashion at further detail later so let me know if you'd like to see that as well if you like my videos and you'd like to see me discuss anime and Yu-Gi-Oh, i am reviewing the Yu-Gi-Oh anime every episode or every week as the episodes come out over on my other channel uh link in the i card end card and description that just be great that means so much if you could check that out but anyway if you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like and subscribe to show your support you can enable notifications by clicking that bell icon next to the subscribe button this will make sure you see each new video as it comes out and will make you a member of the chainlink squad anyway this has been gatorx have a nice day